Hey everyone, Micah here with ebikeschool.com, and today I want to try something a little bit different. Now, all the time I get emails from people asking for my advice on recommending a e-bike for them. You know, they tell me their specific situation, what they're looking for, what their needs are, and they ask which e-bike I think is right for them. And I try to answer as many of these as I can, but sometimes I get overloaded with them. I can get a dozen a day sometimes. The other thing is that uh, each time I do this, I spend a lot of time answering one person's question that only really helps one person. And while I like helping people, it doesn't feel very efficient. So I decided what I'm gonna try to do is take a bunch of these questions and put them in one video and share those answers so that you guys can see what types of e-bikes I recommend for different types of riders. And hopefully this helps more than just the original rider of the question and can be of more use to the general community. So this is what I'm gonna try, we'll see how it goes. All right, the first question I have here is from Rob in Lynchburg, Virginia. Rob lives uh, fairly close to work where he commutes about two to three miles, but he's got a quarter mile long, 15 to 20% grade right in the middle. So as he says, his commute is uphill both ways. On top of that, he is about 250 pounds, which I believe is somewhere around 110 or 120 kilos. And he wants to go uh, 25 miles per hour, which is around 40 kilometers per hour. Um, so there's two bikes he's looking at right now, the Ride One Up 500 series and the Aventon Pace 500. Both of these are 500 watt nominal e-bikes. And uh, he wants to know if these would be good for him. So thanks for the question, Rob. Uh, I've actually ridden both of these bikes and they're both great bikes. Uh, the nice thing is that they're both fairly affordable. The Ride One Up is somewhere around like I want to say 1100 bucks and the Aventon 500 is somewhere around 13 or 1400 bucks. So they are going to fit the budget that you're looking at. The issue here is that for your specific situation, you've got three sort of high power requirements. One, uh, you want to go faster, about 25 miles an hour. Two, you've got hills and three, you're a larger rider. Each one of these by themselves would require a bit more power. Altogether, they definitely require a higher power bike. At 500 watts, if you were riding on throttle only, you would not have the kind of performance that you're looking for. And I don't think you'd be able to achieve your goals. However, in your email, you said that you want to be getting back into fitness and you're definitely gonna be pedaling. If you are pedaling, then I think 500 watts is probably the minimum of what you'll want. I'd rather see you on a 750 watt bike, but I think you can do it on 500 watts if you're gonna be pedaling along. The hill's not gonna be fun, but it is gonna be good exercise. The other thing is all of these bikes have uh, seven speed cassettes, so you can easily drop the bike into a lower gear and use a higher power assist setting, and I think you're gonna be fine. Between these two bikes, the Aventon Pace is a bit nicer. Uh, it's also got the hydraulic disc brake, so it's got a bit of an upgrade. I think they both have similar 500 watt hour batteries. Uh, for Ride One Up, I know that you can get a larger 800 watt hour battery, but if your commute's only two to three miles, I think you're fine with the stock battery. So between these two bikes, I think you're probably all right. If you wanted to upgrade a bit, I would probably recommend something like the uh, Rad Power Rad City, which is a really good commuter bike. It's got that strong 750 watt direct drive rear hub. Uh, it doesn't have the hydraulic disc brakes of the Aventon, but uh, it would give you a little bit more power. As long as you're comfortable doing a good amount of the pedaling though, and it sounds like you are, I think either the Ride One Up 500 series or the Aventon Pace 500 are probably gonna be good for you. Between those, I would probably personally go for the Aventon Pace 500 if I had the extra money, but you can save a couple hundred bucks by going with the Ride One Up 500 series. And the downside is you basically don't get the uh, hydraulic disc brakes, but the other uh, effects of the bike are gonna be pretty similar. The performance is pretty similar and you're gonna end up with a pretty good bike either way. So I, ho I hope that's helpful. So next up, we have Howard Gabe from Santa Monica, California, who's interested in a um, $300 Jetson Bolt bike. This is a bike you can buy either online or at Costco or Target, as he says. And uh, he wants it basically for uh, cruising around places like the uh, Venice Boardwalk. So uh, I've ridden this bike as well, the Jetson Bolt. Um, this is, I'd call it more of a seated scooter than a bike but it's got that bike form, which is nice because you're sitting down and especially for an older person that doesn't want to be standing up on a standing scooter, I would probably recommend this. Um, I actually had the Jetson Bolt and I gave it to my mom for that reason because it's just more comfortable for her to be sitting on a small little bike style uh, scooter than standing on a normal kick scooter. The problem with the Jetson Bolt is that it's just not the highest quality thing out there. I mean, you know that going into it, it's a $300 bike scooter thing. So as long as you're comfortable knowing that you're getting a cheaper bike, it can still work for your purpose, which is basically slow speed cruising around the boardwalk. Um, the assembly is pretty easy. It comes 
almost fully assembled. I think the handlebars are just folded down and you have to stick the seat and the pedals on, which are both quite easy. And for a low speed kind of cruising around bike for an older guy, it can definitely work for you. The other thing is that it's pretty lightweight, so it's pretty easy to just pick up and carry with you. So if your goal is just, you know, a very cheap entry level cruise around the boardwalk bike, yes, I would recommend it, but no going in that it's just, it's not that high quality. And uh, the other thing is it doesn't have a very large battery. Don't recall what the battery size is off the top of my head, but um, definitely check into that and look at the range because whatever they say the range is, you're probably gonna get about 50 to 75% of that. So look into that, but otherwise, yeah, it's a fine little sort of cheap entry level e-bike. All right, next we have Mark out in Palm Springs who is looking at two different bikes, the GoTrack Shift S1 and the Swagtron EB7 Elite. Um, he's leaning towards the GoTrax because it's uh, cheaper, lighter, and it also has additional chargers for purchase. Um, and he's heard that the Swagtron's pedal assist can feel sort of out of control. So uh, again, both of these bikes I've ridden, well, I shouldn't say that. The GoTrax I've ridden, I've ridden the slightly upgraded version of the Swagtron EB7. I've ridden the Plus version, he's looking at the Elite. They're very similar. Between the two, they're both, again, these are very cheap entry-level bikes. They're a step up from that Jetson Bolt for sure. Uh, they're also both legit bicycles because they have pedals. And so if you're looking to get into a real e-bike that you can pedal around and you have a backup if the battery were to die, this is definitely a better option because unlike the scooter, you can still pedal it. Again, these are both very cheap bikes, so you have to know that going in. Between the two, um, my experience with the Swagtron, I haven't really noticed that the uh, pedal assist feels out of control. Both of these bikes have cheap pedal assist. It's just cadence-based pedal assist, which means it measures how quickly the pedals are spinning and applies power instead of the nicer torque sensor method, which actually measures how hard you're pushing on the pedals to apply power. With the cheaper cadence-based sensors, they always feel a little jerkier, so that's just par for the course for these cheap bikes. But in my opinion, both bikes felt fairly similar um, and neither felt out of control. Uh, the Swagtron EB7, has um, nicer wheels, you don't have to worry about spokes braking, and it also has that rear suspension, which isn't great, but does make a bit of difference. So there's one reason to upgrade for about 100 bucks or so if those are important to you. When it comes to chargers, I know you're saying that you like the fact that the GoTrax has spare chargers and the uh, Swagtron is either out of stock or you can't find them. The thing with these chargers is you don't really need the company's charger. You can get pretty much any aftermarket charger. The important thing is that you do have to match the voltage. So you have to be careful here. I'm not saying you can take any charger. You need to find a charger of the proper voltage. But as long as you check the output voltage of the charger that came with the bike, uh, which I think both of these are 36 volts, don't hold me to that, so make sure you check. But I believe they are. If it's a 36 volt bike, that means it's a 42 volt charger because uh, the output voltage is going to be higher. So you just need to find a 42 volt charger of uh, similar power rating. These are probably, you know, little two amp chargers. So you can get any cheap $20, 42 volt, two amp charger to work for it. Between the two, if you're really going for budget, get the GoTrax. Uh, the one caveat I will mention there is that the battery is not only removable, but it is not lockable. So anytime that you go and uh, leave your bike outside at a store or something, you do need to bring the battery in with you because anyone that walks by can just pull the battery off of the bike and walk away with it. It's a weird design in terms of the battery. I don't know why they went with it, but that's what you have. So they're both fine bikes for, for entry level e-bikes, not great quality, but they'll do what you need to do. And if budget is your ultimate decider between the two, I'd say go with the GoTrax. If you can swing another hundred bucks or so, uh, the EB7 Elite would be a good bike and if you can swing another 100 bucks on top of that, the EB7 Plus is a slight upgrade, but it really just depends on your budget. All right, so next up we have Kara, who appears to be some type of river guide or shuttles river trips. And she wants to know if the Ride One Up 500 series would be good on dirt roads. So it kind of depends on what you mean by dirt roads. If it's really just like a, you know, sort of dusty dirt road or a gravel road, yeah, it's gonna be fine. You might wanna swap the tires for something a little bit knobbier, but uh, it's got front suspension and I've ridden the bike on um, you know, grass and, and dirt trails and it works just fine on sort of normal nature trail style trails and, and dirt roads. If you're talking about like a deep rutted out uh, four by four course or something like that, 
then it's probably not going to be enough. You'd want full suspension. But if this is really just like a you know dirt road for cars, then the Ride One Up 500 series is going to be totally fine. That front suspension is all you need, and it works just fine. All right, last one for today, and this is sort of an interesting one. This is a motorcycle recommendation. So uh, this is Paul, who has been looking at um, cheap electric motorcycles out of China. So he sent me a couple different uh, sales sheets from these Chinese companies and wants to know if I would recommend either of these. So uh, first of all, looking at the, I guess it's the josievehicle.cn, this has almost certainly got to be a scam. Um, there's no way you're getting up to 150 kilometers per hour, which is like 96 miles an hour, with a four kilowatt motor. It's just not happening. Um, so this one, whatever bike they send you, it's, it's not gonna meet these specifications. And I think it's gonna be disappointing. So I would avoid this one. Also, the pricing just seems suspiciously low. Uh, next, we have the, uh, what is it, the Stanford Wuxi electric vehicle, Tech Co. Uh, they've got four different motorcycles here, five, eight, 10, and 20 kilowatts. These specs are at least, I would call this believable. Again, anytime you go with these cheap Chinese motorcycles, you never really know what you're gonna get. It's always going to be a gamble. That being said, there are some cool, affordable electric motorcycles in China. So I'm not saying that you should avoid Chinese motorcycles you know, completely. I'm not saying that at all. There is some really cool stuff coming out of China, but you got to go into this knowing that you're taking a risk when you order one of these sight unseen Alibaba motorcycles. If you're willing to take a risk, now we can look at this Stanford company. And this one looks somewhat interesting. I would probably go for the uh, 20 kilowatt model here on the higher end. I think that's like three and a half thousand dollars. The reason being that I'm sure it won't really come with a 20 kilowatt motor. It's probably going to be more like eight to 10 kilowatts, but at least this one, the specs are more reasonable. They're not so overreaching. I imagine it's not going to get the full uh, top speed of 150 kilometers per hour. A lot of these bikes top out somewhere around uh, 100 to 120 kilometers per hour, which is more like 60 to 70 miles per hour. It's probably not going to get the full range, but since it's already so cheap, you might as well, you know, fully spec it out for three and a half thousand bucks. Last thing is note that there are going to be a lot of charges along the way that you aren't going to realize. The shipping is going to be a lot more expensive than you expect. It could be anywhere from 750 to maybe 1500 bucks. Um, and then along the way, there's probably going to be mini ransoms where it has to get handed off to a broker or to a door-to-door uh, -door shipping company and they charge a couple hundred bucks here or there. And so there's a lot of annoying steps and payments that have to be made when you order something like this direct from China. So know that going in, the three and a half thousand dollars is not the final price. But if you compare these specs to a comparably specced zero motorcycle, something like the FXS, you're talking about three and a half thousand dollars versus 10 or $11,000. So you can definitely save a lot of money going this way. All right, so there were a bunch of questions that I've answered over the last few days. And I hope you guys found that as sort of an interesting and helpful uh, video so you can see how I recommend different bikes to different people. If you like this video, let me know. This was sort of an experiment, so I'm interested to hear what you think in the comments below. Uh, maybe I'll do this again. Maybe we can turn it into a series. Something like uh, every now and again I take a bunch of, of these questions and I do a, you know, which e-bike should I get video. Um, in fact, maybe I'll, you know, I'll set up an email address. If you guys want me to do this again and recommend a bike for you, then shoot me an email at um, which ebike should I get at gmail.com and I will do my best to answer as many of these as I can. But like I said, let me know in the comments below what you think of this and if this should continue into something bigger. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So thanks for watching everybody. Last but not least, the randomly selected commenter from my last video who will win the giveaway is... NJ Full Wider 5. So congratulations. Just let me know which one of my books you'd like. Either DIY Lithium Batteries, DIY Solar Power, the Ultimate Do-It-Yourself E-Bike Guide, or Electric Motorcycles, and let me know where to send it. And anyone else who wants to win a copy of one of my books for free, just put a comment below, and hopefully you'll be the randomly selected commenter at the end of my next video. And anybody who doesn't want to wait that long to win one of my books can always find them on Amazon. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you next time. Man, the sun came out and it is bright.